So John Boy, <laughs> <laughs> we're back together. The band is back. You're here to join me, John. We've got game week 260 on the horizon. Me and you have been absolutely buzzing uh, when we've seen all this new stuff coming out. Specialist League Legends have been activated, all this good stuff. And we were meaning to get together to do some more content recently. And I just thought, you know what, this game week is going to, it's going to again, similar to last time where we're catching up, an historic game week. We're getting mm-hmm. all these new regions, all these new leagues rolled out. And, you know, we've been chatting about it before recording or whatever. It feels like we've got a basket full of headaches in front of us, doesn't it? <laughs> mm. It's one of those. Yeah, look, thanks for having me, Quinny. It's it's, it's an absolute headache. Um, it, it's beautiful having these things. But, like, you know, you, you get... You get into your routine every week of going and setting your teams. And I'm used to now when I'm in super rare, I do this. And when I'm in rares, I do this and I'm limited to do that. And now I'm having to almost tear it all up and decide what to prioritize. Because like the Legends Challenge, I I can enter the limited. But I still need to find two outfielders that are worthy of playing there. The Specialist Super Rare League, I have cards that can definitely make me play there um, and probably do okay. But it's like, do I want to pull them out of like my All Star D two or Super Rare team, my Under Twenty Three uh, Super Rare team? Do I want to take out De Kaiser, who would be a keep my only eligible keeper? Is it worth it? So there's a lot of decisions that kind of tear up the script and everything that we've been doing now and we've been comfortable with for some weeks. Um, and I I don't know the answer, and I don't think I'll really I don't know, think I will know the answer um, until we get used to this new format for a couple of weeks and you start to see where the rewards are and where the numbers are. And where your priority should lie, but it's exciting, but it is a headache <laughs> for sure, man. And I think, like, at, you know, the, the league I'm the most excited about. If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily global football content, everything from Wonder Kids and Rising Star managers to fantasy football and watch alongs. That will also automatically enter you into my April giveaway. This month, I'm giving away a one of a hundred Belgium Youth International, Ewood Pletinch, and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. It is a specialist one because, like you, I've got lots of cards supervisors in particular that are good players nice cards but they're just they're not always a killer on the so5 scores mm. you know so a specialist league does really open up the opportunity to get those kind of cards out there and we've all been kind of crying out for utility for those kind of like non like apex predators if you like mm. but as i look at the specialist I... super rare and i know sorry I cut you off there there's only prizes for podium you know so as a mm. real do or die division you make it or you don't you know yeah, the special super rare is a fun one, like because I think like you know the goalkeeper is going to be a massive, massive. I can't, I can't emphasize how massive a battle like it will be there. Do you know how many people have the super rare? It will be a real wheels game. Do you know? I think when I see the the specialist super rare league, or one day we'll have the specialist underdog and stuff. When I look at it, it's almost like where we are at, Quinny, and how how we've been on so rare for so long with big enough galleries. I don't know if you view underdog rare how I view it, where it's like. They're guys that were never going to make my teams, but will probably shoot a 35. But they might do something. So, like, I've got, like, Haru of Fuji, who's going in there. Luca Oyen, uh, the gank guy, kid. Zaydu Yusuf, Calvin Stang. You know that type of caliber player that it's like, they're young guys who I believe in for the future, but they're never going to make any teams. So they go into the underdog. I'm kind of viewing this, like, this super rare specialist league as, like, it's for the wheel wheels, like the proper wheels who have that kind of depth at super rare, they can definitely, whenever they've got a bunch of those kind of keepers and stuff, you know, whenever you're at the stage where you have enough super rare keepers that you can't play them all, I'm nowhere near that. The people who are there will be able to throw in just any old junk here. But for people like even us, it's a real like dilemma. It's we, yeah. I think we are still kind of looked at as wheels in a sense. So it is a bit of a wheel problem, but like there's guys who like will just throw a few like spam a few players in here, but for me it's like I will have to really detract from my um, D three sort of uh, rare pro or even super rare division if I want to go here, and it's creating a real dilemma because that tier one unique is a huge reward, but it's like I don't know if it's worth taking my only super rare goalkeeper who's also under twenty three and not entering under twenty three super rare just to go into the special super rare league. Yeah, I threw a lot at you there, but it's basically no, no. I've got a head fuck. Is what it is, and I think part of the part of the thing that really does like um, put your head in a blender with it is we don't really have any clear outline of what kind of scores win these tournaments yet. Underdog, specialist, or legend, you know, because like yeah. you can look at pro, you can look at super rare, you can look at limited, and go, oh well, on average you need this and that, but in these leagues, man, who knows? Like, <laughs> mm. you know, yeah, because of, because of the goalkeeper bottleneck, you know, maybe even a DNP keeper might carry someday one day, you know, if there is like not that many that qualify or eligible or whatever. So 
Um, that may be more yeah. of an underdog situation than a specialist one, granted. But um, but yeah, it's the, the, the thing I'm looking forward to, and I'll be doing a proper lineup builders, I'm sure you will, and like closer to the, the deadline, Thursday, Friday kind of time. Because by that time, we'll have a better idea of how many managers are going in. And then we're going to need to try and reverse engineer it and work out like how difficult is it going to be to, you know, at the moment with the specialist super rare of 67 and the underdog rare at the moment there's 395 so i'm actually expecting the underdog rare to get like really high because i think there'll be tons of people like us and people who are starting out that have a team that would look really good in that division that outside of that division is useless mm. yeah you know. yeah i think like when i'm looking at it the l5 l15 change they made is actually huge I think like I would normally expect to have a couple of players like Trent hasn't played a couple of games, you know, maybe he'd be slipping back towards that. Maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe his L5 still like 60. I don't know. But like when I'm looking there, I don't have many guys or maybe it's because I'm not looking at my used players. I don't know how many guys I have there who would be sort of eligible. No, I think the L15 on the face of it really does sort out the kind of you have to kind of pick shitters. There's not guys who have just been out for two games or suspended or on a short, bad run who are actually elite scorers. Like, remember the special weekly when we were in Spain? I had Trent in that lineup, which yeah. was meant to be, you know, uh, Jonathan David was there too. Like, come in, come on. But this this week, it feels very like, oh, yeah. Or maybe it's just my gallery build. It does feel a bit more like, yeah, this you is the to- dregs. I definitely agree because when I when I even when I flick between like if I, I click an underdog rare right and then let's just say midfielder used so I can see them all it starts off highlighted on L15 so I'm just looking at the top three guys 40, 32, 35, 29 that's on the L15 and when you drop it to the L5 they all break the you know the, 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 yeah you know that the, the last five actually is the opposite way around so the L15 I think it will make it a lot more competitive for definitely a lot more people. And like the actual caliber of players I've got knocking around here are like rotation merchants and DNP headaches. And you've got people. one good player. You've got one good player. Oh yeah, who's that? Memphis Depay. Oh yeah, I've got Memphis in there. I was wondering how you knew what players I'd have, but yeah, you've got them as well. <laughs> I'm captaining him. Do you know? It's one of those where it's all duck or no dinner. Like, do you know Memphis comes in, gets a goal, gets some game time? Or not. I think he's the only player I have that is actually capable of an eighty plus score in this whole team. Um for sure. So, yeah. One thing that one thing that uh, again I think everyone's looking forward to getting their hands on is like the Legends League. And you've I know I, I know from listening to your content, Legends has been a big thing. You've been mm. sizing up for a while anyway. Are you buzzing for it? I am. I'm very excited for it. I think it's great. I think it's amazing we've finally got utility for these cards. I would like to see the scarcity of the rewards. Uh, you will win legend cards is what it says, but it doesn't let us know. Oh, let me see at least one. No, it doesn't tell us the scarcity of the, the rewards yet. I mean, I think it would be nice here that even if the top, the podium got kind of rares or something yeah. um, or better, just to kind of allow people through the legends limited to propel themselves and to be able to play in legends pro. Um, but no, I'm excited. Uh, there is a bit of like um, a bit of regret I've talked about it on podcasts for a long time about how I trust it's so rare to come around and, and give utility to these cards. Um, and I did pick a few of them up like months ago. I picked up six. So I have a full team and then an extra defender. Um, or actually, no, what have I got? I've got basically, I've got Zanetti, Platini, Cannavaro, Van Basten, Cruyff and Casillas. Um, so I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not upset. I'm very happy because I've got some really strong guys there, yeah. but, there was part of me, Quinny, that was honestly on the precipice of like just depositing a ton of ETH and just snapping up the floor. I mean, like it crossed my mind on like multiple occasions of just going, do you know what it is? Let's just go and buy a hundred legend cards and just sit on them because I just, I just felt it had to come. So part of me is regretful that I didn't, but look, it is what it is. We'll learn. Maybe next time I'll just have more conviction and pull the trigger. Yeah, well, uh, last time we, we got together, you'd done the same thing with Shurs, where you just you, you felt it in your plums, as you say, and you you, <laughs> went, balls, you went balls to the wall for it. I, that kind of thing, like you know, I'm always I always shite it. Like, see, I always think like if I did go out, if I was as if I had as much conviction as you, and I went out and I bought like fifty legends, I would be terrified that I couldn't say. Oh, I've just got that bit mm. of fear, you know. Like as much as sometimes, like sometimes you can take the jump with the Shurs, and sometimes the you know, um. I always think about just that mass buying. Like I was listening to your podcast this week with Jay Fraz and his multiples, mm. and that kind of thing terrifies me in case you get it wrong. Mm. That's just my 
personal feeling, but I know it's like that regret sometimes when you're like, I, I did know it. I felt it. Now, that feeling was real. I, I, yeah. I knew it and here it is now, you know. I quite often, I never really look at myself in any way, shape or form as like an expert in So Rare. I'm very much just a guy who happens to have a camera in a little room to make videos and I just have the crack and try and talk to people smarter than me. But there also is a part where you have to kind of look at the fact that, Quinny, I mean, me and you for the last three years, maybe even touching four You've got knows your history in football and sports betting and whatever else. But for me, you're talking four years of playing games like so rare where matrixes and players and hype and following Twitter conversations and um, sentiment within communities. You know, there's experience there, you know, and it's hard to, to actually like just say that and say, Do you know what, actually, I am kind of experienced at this. And there do come times whenever you're you've been operating on a space like this for so long and you've been on a platform like this or this for like being so rare me and you've been on nearly two I've been on less than you, but you've probably been on nearly two years. Yeah. Um, you know, there will come times whenever that in, intuitiveness or you've been here before and you can see something and it's like it's hard to just trust that and believe that, oh God, maybe I actually do know something here and just lean into it. Um but I, I definitely felt that with Legends and I didn't act. So I've taken that lesson. And next time I feel like that about a type of player, if they start to become like fullback rumors or some shite like that, I'm going all in, baby. I don't care. Do you know? That's it, man. Uh, it's a bit learning from it. And again, I was having a similar conversation with somebody. Like, you know, it's that way where you know, like you sell a guy for point one or something like that. And then two weeks later, they've got an L5 at 85 and everyone's selling them for an yeah. ETH and whatever. And you're like, Fuck, I wish I just kept him another week, you know. Yeah. It's those, it's those, you, you build up that little catalog of experiences and memories of, oh, I remember last time I felt this and then I made that decision. And that that's how you learn it and move forward, certainly. And we've been doing that in SO5 and to kind of get us back on what, what, what we're kind of looking at is all these divisions, none of us have that catalog of experience or that, you know, those reference points to draw upon. Or oh, last time that I had a Barcelona striker that did this, then oh, putting them in a the specialist really worked out for me. Or, you know, that, nobody's got that. And again, similar to what we're all saying when Legends first came out, when Legends, eh, not Legends, a bigger part of Limiteds, is at that point, everyone's on the same playing field. Everyone's an early adopter. Everyone's a whale. Everyone starts off like at zero, mm. you know, and we all figure out what scores are needed, who's the best players, how the dynamics work. And um, for these divisions, uh, I think over the next two or three months, that's probably where a large part of the user base is going to get their get their jollies from, is pulling rewards from here. Yeah. I think, like, look, as I said, like, these divisions are a headache, but it's only a headache because you have to actually think about it. But that's a lot of fun, and it, it does add a whole other dimension to the game, and I think it's great. I mean, and do you know what? it In terms of from so Rare's perspective, I am actively sitting here now thinking, I need to buy more cards. You know, I need to go yep. and buy more limiteds, 100%. I probably should consider picking up a sort of cheap, super rare goalkeeper for specialist divisions and for underdog divisions that come up in super rare every so often because if i had a sort of bottom feeding club um who aren't quite going to be relegated we don't want that but like yeah. a shit enough goalkeeper at a team that won't quite be relegated maybe in the Liga or something and you pick up a super rare for like 0. 0.6 0. 0.8 something like that and then you know, he's, he's 32 years old but you know that he's going to mean that you can enter every underdog super rare division and every, you know it's adding some sort of utility or want for me to get a card like that now which i didn't have and even just in terms of limiteds with these competitions coming thick and fast with these specialist limiteds and underdogs and whatever else and legends it's like geez you know i really could be doing with probably another two to three limited goalkeepers and probably the same in forwards i can get away with the other positions just the way i've messed up my build but like yeah i mean that's good for so rare so rare one people to want to buy cards so i think about a lot of people actively trading in and out of l 15s you know for these kind of things as well it won't be me because sometimes i don't have the bravery for that as we we're kind of mentioning earlier um no but well, that's the sure. thing i think like sorry Quinny, like something that i'm never really i'm not the type of guy who wants to sit with excel sheets and and get into the weeds and the dirty and and really like plan for this shit and then go and trade but like if you are one of these data heavy guys who has the time and who loves that shit the opportunity this is brought up from a scouting and trading perspective is huge yep a hundred if you have the numbers there and you're predicting players and you're watching matches and you're looking who the next like if you can pick out who the next optimal pick for next week's underdog is going to be if you can just about check and say oh geez okay no a line dips down again 
oh my god not that he would ever know because he's a monster but like vanakin is somehow eligible in two weeks time if he does this and he's a tough fixture next week that 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 crunching your wee numbers buy a few of them in flip them like there's some serious opportunity there for people to play the game differently than it's been played before which is great totally. and we, we, we've been at stages before but with galleries and again everyone will experience this no matter what scarcity you shop in whether it be limited or rare but you do get to that kind of critical mass situation where it's like oh i've got all my teams out and you know i probably wouldn't do too much more pruning or reconfiguration and then all these training teams actually still look really good i've got this option i've got that option yeah. but i kind of get them out anywhere and it's like leagues like that underdog one and these ones where you get that added utility. And it's ones that like, you know, your big division will always be whatever your big division is, whatever your gallery is built to target you 23, all-star pro, whatever. But for the ones that you're not too fussed about, but do you know what? I picked up that pair of shirts and he might get a game. Oh, I'll throw him in the underdog. And yeah, if he comes off the bench, mm. then there's some other guys there that might come off the bench or just come back from injury. And it gives you that, that kind of like low pressure utility that, yeah. I think rares have needed for a long time and limiteds it's been bubbling for ages that like their utility was just so flat compared to you know even rare that now it feels like oh, I, I just can't wait to get really stuck into it over the next three months I think it's going to be buckets of fun yeah I mean I can't wait to kind of get into my into my flow with it and you know, I think I do probably need a deposit or at least a big sale and then a kind of redistribution of wealth <laughs> you know yeah. um, but once I've picked up maybe two to three limited goalkeepers and a couple of forwards because I had like you Sammy with the Achilles and I had someone else did something bad what happened I did you Sammy with the Achilles no game let me see can I find it here and I had another Works. big injury Works. Pack, well no. he was he no. was at rare of let course. me see I know this is a isn't a, oh oh Yazerbal I had a Yazerbal and you Sammy who were kind of like two of my main limited forwards just essentially die for six months um which is a shame so Thankfully, actually, do you know what's a conversation point? It's not a big one, maybe, but Brazil's back. Brazil's back, baby. Samba time. Yeah, Brazil's back. So I'm excited about that because I obviously I did a video with Sora Brazil probably a month or two ago now, and I bought a ton of like limiteds. But Class. I've now got the headache, Quinny, of like, I have honestly got like so many um, like limiteds from America. I've no goalkeeper, but like, I have like, there's like, three or four this is just for this weekend and there's a game week actually there's a few guys who played the midweek but like i'm not going to name them all i have tons okay sure. and like i don't know any of their injury statuses or playing statuses <laughs> do you know what i mean so like <laughs> this week i know i'm never going to nail it so i need to like i need to have a couple of weeks and then i can go into stats view and just pick the guys who play <laughs> do you know yeah. or i need to get reading that's um, that, 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 I, I've been dying again to Brazil and Argentina this year, and that's what's held me back from Brazil. It was a wee bit of the lack of choice. We've still not got a lot of clubs there, really. But also the yeah. fact that like it is a new season. A lot of the bigger players, SO5 wise, in the Brazilian teams we have are like over twenty seven, over thirty. You know, so there's tons mm -hmm. of question marks to go around. Do they stay in the season? Do, 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 whatever. So no, I'm with you all the way on that. And uh, I've I've only got two uh, Brazilian cards. And they're limited. It's a Fagner, who I believe you've got one of as well. I think um, he's out this week, so be careful. Yeah, so I actually, my original specialist for this midweek, I had Fagner and Paulinho in it, uh, both the Corinthians. And then I seen that Fagner was out and ended up dropping them both. But that when I put that team together, and I don't know if you've had this kind of thought with the specialist, is that like, I remember when I started out on So Rare, and again, maybe other people had this kind of moment, but like the specialist team, see the way it's built, like maximum two from the same team, one player that's over 60 mm. or whatever. I can remember, and I've seen tons of people you will have as well, when you see when you start your gallery, that's kind of like the first good team that you have, kind of looks like that specialist. You've maybe got a goalkeeper and a defender together. You've got your first kind of, oh, this is a striker that scores goals. And then you've got your Eve bashers that have been kind of like lurking yeah, around yeah. the club or whatever to fill out the gaps. Um so I, I don't know why that came into my head. So, oh, yeah, with the, the Brazilian guys. So I think, like, now that... I, I really think what will really penny drop for a lot of folk is, like, no Bayern stacks, no Ajax stacks, no Atletico Mineiro stacks, Kawasaki Frontale. None of them will be in this specialist league, you know? Um, and again, yeah. sorry, I know we're talking about Brazil, but that's just popped into my head again. No, it's but just... that, that that's great. That's actually a big part of that division we actually didn't discuss. It is the, the sort of restriction on stacking, because... You know, the stacking sort of debate's been going on for a long time. 
whenever the Gary V boom happened just over a year ago, I don't remember much stacking talk before that. People maybe did it, but whenever the the PSUs and the DFS heads come in and they started talking about their correlations and, and stacking, it really has just become almost like this buzzword. Yep. And you aren't big into it. I am ish. I think like if I can, I'm all about it defensively in particular. And I, I hate I actually just don't enjoy watching my players in defensive positions. It's more as a goalkeeper, to be honest, because I mean a defender can put up a hundred even without keeping a clean sheet. But yeah. like I don't enjoy the sweat of a goalkeeper. So I don't want to have to endure the sweat of clean sheets for like three players and teams sometimes. I'd rather just do it once, you know? Yeah. So that's why, like, I mean for my under 23s now i've got that psg under 23 stack let, let long may they last let's hope they're all there next season but like there is a lot to be said for it but anyway i'm going off on a spiel there humble bragging about my psg stack but the, <laughs> the how did i manage to wangle that in there to that conversation uh ma- maximum two players allowed from the same team i think it's a big statement from so rare and they're kind of saying like look we hear you um so look let's try it with this new game mode and i think it's like a nice kind of compromise it's showing that like let, let's give this a go and see how it works um and it is a big big factor in that specialist league because you aren't going to be against I, th- I think it will reduce the, the peak scores yeah obviously they would be reduced anyway because you have to play a couple of shitters in there but you know what i mean it'll further kind of hamstring some people who might have like frontal aren't playing great football at the minute I mean, you might be able to get away with two or three of their players in there. You could probably pay three of them, no problem. I mean, maybe your man or someone has an average of 62, but you could probably feasibly end up having, like, your man, the goalkeeper, he's probably between 40 and 60, and then another defender, and you could have a defensive stack from Frontal, but you can't now because you can't have three. So it is it is definitely a factor. It opens up so much as well for variety and that kind of thing as well. Um but again, like it's one of these things where we're waiting to see more iterations of the game coming through. And I think this is like, again, me and you, we're obviously we've spent a lot of time together um, in March in particular, but we've all, like, me and you and most people we talk to, we've had this kind of bottleneck feeling that there's going to be tons of stuff coming. And it feels like this kind of first kind of wave is lovely, but I can't wait to see what else will be coming throughout the year because mm. I've still get this, I've still get this kind of feeling of some quiet tension. Like, um, what was it I was listening to? It was... Um, the Joe Pompliano podcast that Nicholas Julia done. I don't. Know, I don't know if you caught it. I did. They were talking, yeah. I don't. Yeah. They, they were talking, and again, we kind of know this in the community anyway. How they've not like pressed all their marketing assets. To I, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he said. And you know, there's little signs of that happening, but I think we'll see a wee bit more of that as the year goes on. And it feels like you know some of these iterations is just the beginning. And, did uh, I, like, I know, I know, La Liga TV isn't like the be all and end all the biggest thing in the world, but I don't know if you see my tweet. It was just three days ago. I was sitting in my living room watching La Liga TV. I forget who was playing. I actually forget who was playing. Um, probably Villarreal. And um, up comes, you know, their kind of little promo video for that El Gran Derby thing, which was an amazing production. That's something I haven't talked about. Um, and it was kind of one and a half minute ad of that. And then it finished up with become a so rare manager in bold oh, wow. in the middle of the screen on La Liga TV. Um. Nice. I'll ping this tweet to you. But um, it was like properly like, holy fuck, okay, that, that's marketing. That is oh. marketing right there, do you know? Um, let me see, of I can find you there. Yeah. I sent you the tweet. But um, yeah, I think like if they lean into that, whenever we were over, and I think La Liga is obviously a huge partnership for them that they've leveraged probably more than any other. But whenever we were over in Spain, sure, it was all over the billboards at the games. It was literally crawling on them the whole game. Yep. Um. And if they do lean into that, the big thing, one of the big things that actually sold me on so rare initially was whenever I seen, it was it was a real light bulb moment. My light bulb moment, if ever, anyone ever asked me, was I think it was like Juve or someone, Juve or Bayern. I don't know. It was one of the big clubs, and I seen them tweet it, yeah. and I was like, okay, this is real. <laughs> do you know? Yeah. Okay, that that's an account with fifty million followers, and they've just tweeted about so rare. Okay, this is on. So. I think like the more they lean into that side of it, the social aspect to it, this kind of grand derby type experiences and getting the clubs to share that to get their fans to think, oh my god, I could do that and meet my heroes if I join so rare. I think it could go crazy. Oh, big time, man! And it all starts this game week, game week two sixty specialists and the underdogs. 
I know, mm. I know we're, we'll be uh, tying into it much closer to the actual deadline or whatever, but see of the new the new region, the new divisions we've got access to this game week, what one do you think you will, out of those ones in particular, what one do you think you'll go the hardest at? Legends, does it count? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, Legends Challenge Limited. I think just because I've got the, the, the Legends there, I have to. I mean, it's it's a hard one because I don't know who to prioritise, but I think I probably have to play Cruyff. Uh, well, I have to play Cruyff and Captain him, but I'm even looking now, like there might be a bit of a bit of scope for shifting my Legends about because I think some definitely are better than others. Um, I think I'd love a Beckham bar. I think that would be an overpowered card. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that Legends Limited... I mean, whatever about the number of prizes and entrants that are going to be there, I, I just think it's fun. It's something a bit different. It's a new way of scoring. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think like the other ones are great. I just don't think... Basically, Quinny, to be frank, I came in and bought a bunch of absolute ballers at Limited. Like, I just kind of treated it as like, okay, well, in Rare, I kind of get, I try and be a bit more strategic or buy guys who I believe in for the future or do this or do that. But with Limited, it was kind of like, I just want to buy the best guys. So I kind of did that in Asia. So I actually really struggled to field an underdog team at Limited, unless oh, yeah. they're DMPs. Um, and same with Specialist. I actually just don't have many under 40 averages that might actually play. They're probably DMPs. So it's like, I think I need to go and buy a few guys who are questionable, you know? Or win well, a few. Well, see the kind of guy I, I think it makes more appealing for me to buy. Is some of those guys that I really like the look of that are like kind of crap. You know, I was looking at, um, I've been putting some direct offers out. I watched Verona against Genoa last night and a little right back um, came on for Genoa. His name's Satalo. It's not the guy who plays for Zagreb. It may be his brother or something. But he's like a little crap fullback, like average score, like 40 or whatever. But he's 21. He's Croatian. Plays for a Croatian manager. Yeah. Me buying him now has a wee bit more, at least I might be able to use him, you know, yeah. rather than he is definitely just going to be gathering dust on the shelf. But now it's like, oh, well, if I did pick up a wee Bosco Sitalo or I did pick up a, I'm looking at Tyler Adams because he's on my screen now, but guys like that, it's like, oh, yeah. they actually become kind of useful now because they're decent, they're not too expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and they kind of work out. So I think yeah, some of those guys that you do just watch football and you're like, I like that kid, become a bit more... Mm. Um, you know, feasible. Yeah. I'm looking there, my guy Wesley. You might remember yeah. him. <laughs> he he's a he's an average of twenty five. Now he's up against Atletico Minero, so I don't think it's a great week for him, but maybe he's another is a crap game against them and then he stays under that kind of threshold and he could be useful going forward. But like I mean, I could use him um in the specialist. And then I just need to find one more guy with a low average. And that's that's the hard part. Like, there's like I actually don't really have anyone who's going to play other than I think Sabitzer. Sabitzer's not oh. a bad shout because on Thursday, uh, who have no sorry, I was thinking about uh, Barcelona there. Sorry, who did Bayern? Did Bayern have Champions League? Yeah, they do. Bayern are playing yeah. someday this midweek. Goretzka's just back from injury. Villarreal, so is it? Villarreal, yeah. So there's a good chance that Sabitzer doesn't start the weekend. Augsburg at the weekend, maybe they rotate a bit. It's not a definite, but I think if there's a if there's a match, you might want to throw some beats out for. It might be, might even be that week. But like they could be my two shitters, and then I could go and build yeah. like a a Zorn with four, stick in my Danny Parejo as my main guy or something, and then throw in um Kevin Fickenshire or someone who's like a low enough average but not below forty. And yep. I think like you know you've you've a chance there. So like maybe if I do that, throw Casillas in the legends, maybe that's the play. I yeah. don't know. Again, back to it, like, I told you, what, 20 minutes ago about the headaches this is causing? Those headaches haven't changed in the last 25 minutes, like, just, oh, I'm <laughs> still sure. going back and forth. I think for me, the, the one I'll be going after the hardest is definitely the specialist, because it just feels like, uh, yeah, it just feels like I've got a gallery made for that. A lot of average mm. good football players, but they're not, like, 100 merchants, you know, I've not got as many of those guys knocking about these days. Uh, so yeah. I'm very much looking forward to that, no doubt. Um but yeah. So rare do have a lot of um kind of shitty average super rares on the market at the minute um or yeah. on auction, and they've only got two uniques. I wonder why. We there must be something coming. I have seen that they've let the unique market like dwindle down. You know, every day there's like I think there was a six uniques a day or three uniques a day or something like that, and now mm. there's like there's only two on the market, and then it's going to wipe out in six hours from now. So 
There might be maybe MLS because MLS they did announce that last week, didn't they? That ah, it was coming. So maybe yeah. MLS will come out Tuesday or Wednesday because. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking there, man. I think I need to pick up a unique. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, what, how are you doing super wise? I mean, like, I've got enough super rares, like, but I could do with one unique. Do you know, I would love them to be under 23, but I think that's maybe a little bit optimistic. I kind of have toyed with a few auctions that have been around, um, but they always just go stupid at under 23. I always yeah. just shout back out. But I mean, even looking there, and again, this is one of those where I think it gets towards the point where it's like, oh, do I really want to do this? I would I would rather spend half a house on a player that it, I'm like, oh my God, he is quality. He's under 23. He's destined for the top. And if he doesn't make it there, he'll settle somewhere that he can at least yield me something. Yep. But where it gets awkward is like, I'm looking there and there's, uh, you know, your man from Macklin, um, Harriman's. Yep. He's on the market at the minute, Jeffrey Hermans. I mean, you look at his last five scores, his average, this is obviously why the person's listed him. It's black selling him, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> last five average, 67. But I mean, this is a guy that I know over time, he has actually put up some decent scores. But I'd feel really, like, well, I think like, okay, three ETH, you go and talk to Black, you get him down to two, two and a half or something, whatever else. You get the card. You've got this really solid midfielder, unique. It's like... I just don't feel comfortable with that because I don't know enough about this guy and his like personal situation and like is he gonna go to like second division football over there or is he off the you know what I mean? It's I think like with the unique you, you know you really need to have faith in your purchase. Like whatever about buying a wee speculative rare or limited. <laughs> Super rare you're getting saucy and you kinda have to believe in them. Unique, yeah. you you'd really you really have to, don't you? Like there can be no no doubts, because it's a lot of money. You definitely have to know what you're getting for sure. Like, um, and that's why, like, when I picked up that Suarez for like an ETH, that's all it was. Is an ETH is like it was that kind of nice marriage of like it's not too expensive. I know what I'm getting. I, he's not a young player, of course, mm. but um, I'd been eyeing up, and again, we've been kind of chatting about this. But I've been eyeing up these things, these uniques for like six, seven months, doing this kind of habit of trying to find one that I'm not scared to go to sleep after I bought it, worrying about like <laughs> it's this guy yeah. I did, or you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I need to get an hour one or two myself. I, I, my goal is to get like up to three uniques by the end of this year at some point. So if I can win, that'd one be day. huge. You see, I keep doing stupid things, Quinny, and I don't know if it's stupid or not. But I mean, like, I literally I bought a Jude Bellingham four days ago. Congratulations, by the way, fantastic purchase. I think I got him at a good price. Um, his average isn't too high either. But I, when I'm saying I keep doing stupid things, it's like I bought Jude because I really want them. And I think he he's a I really really rate him, and I did want exposure to Dortmund even just to watch. And if he doesn't stay at Dortmund next season, wherever he goes, I think that hype increases his price. Blah de, blah de, blah. But like I I'm not even using him. Like I can't even use him. Oh, one point six of that. It's not too bad, by the way, man. That's a nice price. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. Like I can't really use him. Like he's not going to play over Koku. Like not even close. So, Dortmund have got no European football left this year, and uh, I think every game for them is a cup final. To be honest, but like I've got like him or Odegaard, and Odegaard shot me a crack in like six pointer last night or something. But like <laughs> Odegaard's bonus is double as well. It's like I can't utilize him. So what I'm saying is like, look, it's a great card. It's one I believe in long term. It's great to have the depth. You know, it's a card I really want. Blah 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 blah. But it's like probably should have kept the one point six eighth back, saved a bit more, and then went and bought a unique. I mean, from a yield perspective. That's definitely what I should be doing. Hmm, I don't know, because be- I think for guys like Bellingham, like you know, your Bellinghams, your Gakpo's, your Sanes, these types of guys, like even if they don't make it into your best team, then all of a sudden your second best team becomes almost as good as your first team. Yeah, and you've got that depth midweek throughout the normal season, international roll around, and you've got a bit of quality there. Yeah, and the thing is, well, like I was talking to, uh, so I was also watching Tonali last night. But let's like, see, guys like Bellingham, and I, I'd say Bellingham's a, a bit more advanced than Tonali in terms of SO five. But the thing about these guys compared to Kochu, and maybe even Odegaard to a greater or lesser extent, is they're already at like the top ish level, you know. So mm. like, if Bellingham can do it for Dortmund, like you say, is relatively. If he goes back to England, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, whoever, you know, you're going to get the same, if not better, production out of him. Whereas yeah. somebody like Kochu, if he goes to Liverpool tomorrow, you know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
No, you're bang on. And I think, like, if I actually had to pick one right now to, like, because I think Koku's hovering around that 1.6 mark. Oh, yeah. Bellingham, I bought for 1.6. I know which one I'm picking if I had to hold one long term. You know, I think, yeah. like, Bellingham is the safer pick, even though Koku doubles his scores every single week. But it is that case of, like, Bellingham's already stepped up. Koku hasn't. I think Koku could do quite well in Germany, actually. I've, yeah, I've not seen enough of him, but his kind of raw stats, like, definitely lend himself to uh, the Bundesliga City of football, certainly. It's funny, I started playing a, a FIFA career mode, um, oh, nice. just for when I'm sitting, chilling out. And obviously, I've got, like, Koku, Odegaard, <laughs> you know, Gakpo, all the got boys. I've got the whole gallery. I started with Spurs so I could play with Kulisevsky. Brought in like Timber, who I don't have. Gvardiol. Do you know, it's, it's like literally like the so rare dream team. Unfortunately, like Vanekin's just like the slowest player in the game. So it's oh, like, he? yeah, you don't really want the Vanekin, but I think I'll get him just before he retires, maybe for a year. But yeah, it's funny how those like little biases and, and loves from so rare kind of bleed into other aspects of of life. Oh, big time, man. I've noticed it more and more of a... You know, football and everything as well. And like again, when I listen to other folk, we're kind of going off, John. So I'll, I'll kind of wrap this up. But like, <laughs> it's, it, it really is that is that extra buy-in that having a having these cards. It's it's so intangible until you've got cards and you put the team out, and then you're like, yes, and then they score, and then you finish ten for whatever. Mm. You know, it's it, it's it's amazing, and it's one of those things that you know. Again, we've been involved in other things, and it's like you say to people sometimes you kind of need to experience it to understand it or you really need to be under the bonnet to really know what's going on mm. and it, it, it really is the case you know like you don't get that you, you won't understand the value that some of the cards hold off the secondary market why i would hold a card even though people are offering me good money because of the attachment you get to it like carlos yeah. soler going to see valencia you know you've been to see barca twice now this year and everything else you know that extra layer on it is um so undervalued and overlooked but it's fucking great. <laughs> Absolutely. A hundred percent. And like I'm um I'm going over to see the Aston Villa Spurs game this weekend in Birmingham. Oh, lovely. Uh, I didn't e- yeah, I didn't even mention that to you. Completely slipped my mind. It's because it's not like so rare related, it's actually just personal life related. Like my mate's turning forty and Class. he's a Villa fan, his family over in Birmingham and he wanted to go over, so we're going over. But um like I'd be going over to that game kinda of like, Oh yeah, this is fun. I might have stuck like a twenty quid bet on, whatever else. But now I've got Kulisevsky rocking in you know i'll get to see him in the flesh Brilliant. stick him into it i've got him in my i've really i think like well, i'll tell you the team i've put him in Do i'm you still really have excited Benzincure? for no no Did you have no. no i did i bought him in a bundle with kulisevsky i think or no, no I, I had him though but like yeah. i've got i think i've picked van de because he's up against sarang this week then i've got nico williams could be sugawara but i think i'll go nico williams or maybe Shures. anyway koku Felix and Kulisevsky. So what I'm getting at is competitive nice. team, and I'll be watching Kulisevsky in the flesh. I've got a one for you, actually. I see that. This is one of those things that I've heard debated a few times. It's not something I ever look at ever, but part of me is thinking like, oh, I might just have a wee sconce at it. There is some buzz to having a player in one of your best lineups on the Monday or like on late on a Sunday. No, oh, it's uh-huh. much more fun chasing than being chased. And I don't think it's really a good idea for tearing up your like teams and stuff. But like that Leao chase I had last night, even though it didn't go to plan, it was the most engaged I've been in a game of football in so long. Do you know? Yeah. Whereas like if that had been on a Saturday, I wouldn't have cared anywhere near as much. Of course. I I've definitely felt that as well. But it's yeah, I, I don't normally realize that until you get to Sunday and it's like, oh, AC Milan play tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. You know, and uh, you're locked in and loaded for it. But what? What's more, I try and do in that sense is I always, I, my best team, if I can, I'll make sure they're all playing at home. If I can, oh, you know. Oh, that's nice. Okay. You know, so if, if I'm on the fence between one or two, well, he's away, he's at home. I'll try and keep yeah. the guys at home. Because um, I'm, I'm having a wee look here. Just It's something I honestly never do, and I don't think it's optimal in any way, Quinny, but like, I've just went ahead and looked for the next Monday. Bologna yep. play Sampdoria. Rayo Vallecano play Valencia. So I'm like, okay, so maybe I should put my Soler in a nice team. Yeah. Captain him. So the chase is on, you know. Bologna, okay, Arthur Theate, the super rare, should I play him this week? And then if you go and look at Sunday, all right, Marseille play at 8 o'clock on Sunday. Lyon play yeah. at 6 o'clock. Do you know, I don't know, Leipzig play at half 6. There's one for you. Milan play at ha- 8 o'clock again. 
maybe Leao in a nice team. Alkmaar play at seven o'clock. Barcelona like, play at eight o'clock. I don't know. I just really like the idea of having like a team with like five guys to go on Sunday night. Let's sit yeah. down and enjoy the football. Well, there's definitely something to be said for players um, performing better when the cameras are on. You know, like when mm. you know they are like the Sunday night, Monday night football kind of vibe kind of match. You definitely do get players that will go the extra yard or maybe run harder for an extra five minutes or whatever because they know, especially younger players that are putting themselves in the shop window. Um, mm. There was some crazy statistic. Um, it was probably outdated now, right? It's not really totally relevant to what we're saying, but it's come into my head. But it's like Jose Mourinho Premier League matches on the television. Statistically, it's like all almost always going to be a draw. If Jose Mourinho is playing the top six, that's what it is. If Jose Mourinho in the English Premier League is playing another top six team on the television, it's almost statistically guaranteed to be a draw. That's mad, isn't it? Because Mourinho just doesn't want to get ripped on the telly, doesn't want to get spanked, <laughs> or, you know, like, I, I'm maybe phrasing yeah, that wrong, yeah. but basically that's the vibe, is he knows he's on the telly and it's always just like, piss him off, park the bus, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, That's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Vintage Mourinho. Aye, right. for sure, man. Magic. Oh, John, thanks very much for cutting time out your busy schedule to, to come and hang out with us. I can't wait for the weekend, mate. I hope you're as excited as I am. And as I say, thanks again for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. I mean, it's just more competitions, isn't it? And I'm really excited to like watch a game from a legend's perspective and kind of cheer for a whole front line or a whole defense. Yeah, that would be, be interesting, actually. Be interesting watching like Inter playing and cheering every time one of their defenders <laughs> passes a ball. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I've got Shevchenko, yeah. so I can finally uh, cheer for Leao a bit now. Or maybe Giroud yeah. or Ibra. Yeah, Leao, Giroud, or whoever else. Maybe Salamakers. He might be a midfielder. But yeah, Quinny, look, thanks a million for having me. Thank you so much. Um, I hope people enjoy this. And you know what What do they have to do, isn't it? All that good stuff. <laughs> Likes, Likes and subscribe. subscribes. Share, retweet, and all that good stuff. All the links to all of John's social media, uh, podcasts, YouTubes, all the rest of it will be in the description down below if you want to hear more from John. Um, and stay out yeah. of trouble. And stay out of trouble. And we'll catch you on the next one, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.